update, acoustic enclosures, classic. Reducing noise at source is the best and usually the most cost-effective solution. Once the machine has been silenced, it stays that way. But in some circumstances, it may prove impossible to reduce noise at source. You then have to consider the next link in the chain of noise, the means of transmission. If you cannot reduce sound at source, perhaps you can interrupt the transmission path. To further reduce the noise dose of this operator, you could interrupt the transmission path of the noise. Do a little experiment before you spend lots of money on something that might not work. Without the cardboard, 95 dBA. With it, 88. Clearly, you can block a significant amount of noise in this case. That is partly because this sound is quite high frequency, which is more directional than lower frequency sound, and so is more easily blocked. <coughs> Reduce. So here's an enclosure around a generator set, which exhibits most of the characteristics of a typical enclosure. Um, it's on a skid, you've got um, steel, you've got cooling air, drilled in one end and out the other end through silencers. You've got exhaust that comes out. So that is a very compact acoustic enclosure. Now, one of the problems with enclosures is, is if I am measuring noise from this machine, it's 100 dBA, and then you put a steel box around me, what happens to the noise level? Goes up by maybe 10 dBA, maybe 9 or 10 dBA. So if you've got your enclosure, the noise level's 100, put your enclosure on, the noise level goes up to 110. So your enclosure is reducing by 20 dB from 110 rather than from 100. So what you do is you line inside the acoustic enclosure with rock wool or fiberglass or foam or something, which is absorbent, which means the noise level goes back down to 100. But it's also fantastic thermal insulation, so the temperature rockets. So your motor burns out in 20 minutes. So you need to get cooling air in and out, which may be force insulation through silence to stop the noise getting out, allow the air to pass, but not to stop the noise getting out. So in principle, in enclosure, you close it all, you have ventilation silencing, you have product going in and out through a silencer, product going through a silencer as well. You have thresholds, it's all sealed, double glazing, door, um, and then comes a, a, but we do need, as you've enclosed, you've blocked the machine now off from uh, sprinklers and things, you may need sprinklers inside for fire and all that sort of thing. So along comes the plumber, cuts an 18 inch square hole to pass a 2 inch pipe through, and all the noise comes out <coughs> to the bed. It's all about details to get high performance out of the enclosure. So here's an example of the sort of details we're talking about. That's because the sound. Occasionally, you cannot reduce noise at source, nor can you block transmission with close shielding. In these cases, and only in these cases, you should consider building an enclosure. That's because making an enclosure work effectively is more difficult than at first it might appear to be. In theory, blocking the transmission of sound by air should reduce the noise level of this motor by as much as 30 dBA. What you're actually getting is a reduction of only about 10 dBA. The reason? The motor is bolted to the base, the majority of which is outside the enclosure. To block the sound effectively, you've got to isolate the sound source. but the reading is still 85 dBA. We're still not getting maximum performance from our enclosure. That's because the sound is bouncing around inside the enclosure, which amplifies it. We are, in effect, getting 30 dBA off a higher level. To improve the enclosure's performance, we must line it with absorbent material. And at last, we've reached the level of reduction we expected. 
But no real life enclosure could be like that. We need ventilation, access for raw materials, and somewhere for products to emerge. 105 dBA, no reduction. So all that expense and trouble has been for nothing, unless we line the duct. 90 dBA is good. As a final improvement, put a corner in the duct. 72 dBA. At last, we've got the theoretical level we've been looking for. But occasionally, typical enclosure construction is 16 to 18 gauge steel on a frame, which will be stainless or galb or whatever, with rock wall fiberglass or foam, because it's all and perforate, to give protection against mechanical damage. So the sound can get into the acoustic absorption, um, but you're not going to damage the. Uh, it's quite friable. Shed, shed particles, you will damage it. So that's typical, but you need to make sure it's very, very well sealed. And if you're looking, this is a generator and closure set. This was the simplest, most consultancy job I ever did. They couldn't quite get the last 3 dBA they wanted off this generator enclosure. So what we've got here is a noise level inside, linear and A-weighted, so you see the A-weighted. It attenuates the low frequencies, and that's where specification was A-weighted. So that's inside, and this is outside, and it's just too noisy. You can see we've got noise in the mid-frequency range. And this is the noise reduction we're getting. So we're getting, at high frequencies, we're getting about 30, 30 plus dB, and low frequencies about 20 dB. But if we look at the performance, this is the transmission loss of the materials. So green is 16 gauge steel. <coughs> the purple one is 18 gauge steel. That one is lead. And this is what we're actually getting from the enclosure. So we're getting more attenuation at low frequencies than the material the enclosure is made of. At high frequencies, we're getting a lot less. And that is indicative of the leak. So high frequencies go to very, very small gaps. So in this particular case, they've got this enclosure with, let me show you, here it is, an enclosure with doors, perforated sheet steel, acoustic absorption, big seals like door seals on a car, and the doors are shut and they're going, I can't understand the going to need another 3 dB attenuation. <coughs> I leant on the doors to compress the seals, extra 3 to 4 dB attenuation. Because if you're looking at 30 dB attenuation, that's a factor of 1,000. So pinholes make a difference. Any yes, detail, massively detailed. So you've got a big reduction required from enclosure. You need to get all the details exactly right. This is what a big fan inside the enclosure. And here's the water pipe with the small hole that the um, plumber done. <coughs> now passage of that pipe. Now wondering why people are complaining about the noise from the fan because you've got a gap in it and it's reduced the performance enclosure from about 30 dB to about 15 dB because of the gap. Small things. Because of this graph here which I showed you earlier. <laughs> Enclosures so often perform inadequately. This, for instance, is a well-made enclosure. And yet, around here, the levels are significant. Here's the problem. Although the access for raw material is well silenced, the raw material itself is vibrating and transmitting sound out of the enclosure. As before, test your diagnosis. Another problem with enclosures is that they are often modified to suit the demands of work. This unsleeved slot so compromises the performance of this enormously costly and well-made enclosure that the enclosure might just as well have been constructed of thick cardboard. And it's not unusual to see this, an enclosure with its doors open to allow easier operation of the machine inside.
Used like this, the enclosure becomes a funnel, aiming noise at the operator. And when the factory is reorganized and this press is moved, will the enclosure move with it? This is yet another argument in favor of always attempting first to reduce noise at source. Now this is something we've developed for pipelines, because if you're lagging <coughs> pipes, one of the problems of conventional lagging is it traps moisture against the pipe, which can always cause a corrosion problem. So we, we've designed a, um, a retrofit one that does not touch the pipe, so you cannot get any corrosion. So we're trying to turn lagging on, on pipe, make it easier to inspect on well, gas pipelines and the rest you have to inspect on a regular basis. And currently you have to cut through the um, existing lagging and you have to guess where to cut. And once you cut through it, you have to replace it. And that's pain. So this you can just take off and, and do. So that's the sort of partial enclosure that we use. Any questions or comments on enclosures? Have you got enclosures? Yeah. yeah. Problems? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Which are? Well, the door's been taken off to them. <laughs> the door's been taken off, yeah. yeah. So, so when you say closure, what do you exactly do you mean? It's a box, yeah. We, we've got some pictures of them. I'm going to have a look. And these ones that go like around the doors and stuff, is a gap about this. I was size. going to say, have you got a lot of macro, you know, polycarbonate? Yeah. Transparent yeah. enclosures? Yeah. yeah. It's like hygiene like that. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, gaps. You saw the graph on gaps. So, I mean, one again, a really, really simple thing. You've got an enclosure. Open roof? Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We've got um, lots of gaps around so, the bottom. So what can you do to improve that? Close the gaps. Close the gaps. I mean, these have like the, the bottle feeders inside them. Yeah. So like, really, we should put, I don't know if anyone's ever looked at actually what's making the noise before putting these things around well, and stuff. But, but yeah, it just our, means... our approach to that is to look at the machinery inside. Yeah. And say, can we reduce the noise at source? Yeah. First. I, and I don't know if that's no, happened. Because on yours you've probably got air noise, you've probably got things dropping onto hoppers, you've probably got all sorts of you know, things like that, vibration, isolation, whatever. So you modify what happens inside and you say, okay, we need 15 dBA off to get down to below 80. If you reduce the noise of stuff inside by 5 dB, then your enclosure doesn't have to be that good, it can be more convenient. Yeah. So that's the first thing, try and reduce the noise of stuff inside. Secondly, close off the gaps. And literally, you can get polycarbonate, you've got a two inch gap along the bottom, reduce that to 10 millimetres. If you halve the gap, you get 3 dB off. Uh, you reduce the gap by a factor of 3, you get 5 dB off. It's like, honestly, it's like, well, that's one without a door. Yeah, right? that's the one without the door. But, um, yeah. They've took the door off. Yeah, look. Yeah. So, so literally what you can do to test this, if you get some thick cardboard and some white tape, go around and close off the gaps to something you think is reasonable. So it's still not well, a we've, got the, we've got these yeah. that work and they're all below the, the yeah. area. But we've also got in the, same, in the same area the exact same machines, but the doors are off the front. Right. So the vibrate yeah. there's your vibratory ball yeah. and it's in there. As I said, the best thing to do is reduce the noise of stuff inside first. It's actually yeah. really, really cheap. Yeah. Then reduce the gaps. Yeah. And if that's not enough, and they say you, say you get white tape and thick hard, close off the gaps, leaving enough of gaps so that you've got tolerances and things. And, and just measure it, you get the same, you get the right answer before you actually get. And then replace the cardboard with polycarbonate that's bolted or glued, so it's fine. And then, on top of that, put some of this inside at some convenient location that doesn't obstruct vision, it doesn't get sprayed and stuff, which reduces the noise inside. And for those measures, you can improve the performance of existing enclosures by 5 dB or 7 dB quite easily, and very, very cheaply without affecting anything. So that, that's really quite simple stuff, as far as enclosures are concerned. Do you know if like um, a polycarb enclosure and you just put that stuff on the, on the ceiling? Yeah. Will that make a difference? Yes, yeah. it will. Doesn't matter where you put it inside. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean a classic in the food industry is they have polycarbonate guards with all the gaps. And uh, I'm trying to remember, yeah, it was 
toothpaste tubes again. Um, we managed to get 10 dB off, it's really loud inside, 10 dB off the air that's inside and a bit of mechanical noise. We've got 10 dB off inside. And then there weren't many gaps, but the roof was open. So we covered not the whole roof because air's going up, temperature, things like that. But we just left a slot around the outside, or in the middle, I can't remember now, but put acoustic absorbent on it because the lights, there's enough lights not to worry about lighting. So we just had literally maybe two square metres of acoustic absorbent in the, on, on the new roof, and that gave us an extra 7 or 8 dB, which got us well, well below 80. So the combination was down from either mid to high 90s down to less than 80, just by spending, I don't know, about 500 quid on it. And it had no effect on anything. All they have to do is, is they can actually, I think they can actually take the roof off and clean it. You know, it depends on the particular circumstances. The practicalities maybe make it slightly more yeah, uh, tricky, but but in principle, a bit more hygienic than foam as well. As you say. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't use foam at all, no. But lighting is, is an issue. Sometimes you, where you put your absorbent, you don't affect the lighting. So you can see the machine. They need to be able to see it to see it you know, jammed or something like that. But the best you say you, you start from the source. Can I reduce the noise at source and then? Next thing, what's the simplest thing to do through performance enclosure? And then add it to the to the last step. And in some enclosures, for example, on some machines, enclosures are got lots of steel panels. There's a few laminated steel panels to stop the vibration in the transmitters. And that's quick and easy. You can laminate on the outside or the inside or replace them. It depends what's easiest. Doesn't matter which side to put it. Usually on the inside for appearances. Because that's another thing that I've been made quite sometimes quite depressed about. You're talking about looking at um, improving enclosures and doing some laminated stuff and all the rest of it. And they're, they're arguing about really simple, cheap things. And then the song goes, "Oh yeah, but we want to be able to take visitors around." So suddenly they will spend eight grand on polishing all the stainless steel, just on the polishing, whereas they're not prepared to spend two grand to get the noise down. And yeah, okay. We can see the priorities here.